I'm back. <laughs> All right. I probably need to end this one on my phone now and pop open the next one. Cuphead Catacomb Park Cards Part 2. Oh dear. It's one of those days. Mercury Retrograde ends tomorrow, right? <laughs> I don't know if I've got anybody in or watching but it says i've been live for 30 seconds so hopefully thank you lady d and thank you for sticking with me i hope i can manage to stay with the broadcast jeff's here part two jeff <laughs> i do apologize if um if i lose this we'll give up because <laughs> i've done i've done an hour anyway earlier chatting to the lovely Kate Flowers, who was just an absolute joy actually to um, chat to before we went on air and afterwards I had a few little words with her and yeah, it was just nice to, um, I feel very fortunate to be able to meet people in this community and have people come onto the channel and chat to me and answer my questions and your guys' questions and things like that. So, so hello to everybody, sorry if I'm, making you kind of search around and try and find me. Uh, hello, Jennifer. Yes, you got here. You had a late night. Do tell, do tell Jennifer what you've been up to. And Leia Cakes Arts is here. Joyce, hello Joyce. But White here again, sorry. I do apologize. Um, Becky Beagle is trying to type as well as hold the baby. <laughs> and Amethyst Soul, Christina, Jamie Loom. We're losing you again. How are you? Hello, Kelly Bear. Can you can you see me? We're having technical difficulties. Um, can you still see me then, or is it just a really bad connection? Because on on my iPad, I'm I'm coming out really clear, really sharp. But um, looking at it on my phone, yeah, it looks a bit pixelated and not very good. You're blurry. Uh, shall I give up? Shall we see how we go? So I was reading last night actually somebody saying that Mercury retrograde causes technical issues. <laughs> I did a whole interview for an, over an hour, probably an hour and a half by the time you've finished pre-talking and talking afterwards and my my laptop wasn't plugged in so my laptop is flat and charging so I've had no choice but to come on to um, and use my iPad, but it doesn't look like that's brilliant because we froze and this is part two. So I'll see how we go, but I want us to have a look at this fabulous deck from Il Manigello, which is the um, Binchiate. And it's a 97 card tarot deck. Um, but if the picture is blurry, it's gonna, it's gonna spoil the the, the moment, isn't it? Well, Jennifer went out to the theatre last night to see Jesus Christ Superstar. Jesus Christ Superstar. Or is it is it a misspelling or is it another version of, of the show? Because Jesus, oh no, it's Jesus, yeah. Because the Jesus is a name, I thought it might be a, a bit of a parody or something. Ink and Flame says, Hermit's Cave. I recently got the Visconti Sforza by Il Manigello, which I've just showed in part one with the, the deck edging. And the backs are chipping a bit. Have you found that to be the case? Love them, but I'm afraid to use. Um, no. To say that this deck as well was pre-loved by Patrick uh, Fogarty. Um, I mean, the, the edges are really... Um, really gorgeous and aged anyway but there's no there's no chipping they are that lovely kind of vintage color but no mine have mine have been fine so far uh, so oh it's a shame it's a shame because it is a it's not a cheap deck is it you know it's around 80 80 90 pound deck so um, we won't be able to see the cards I know it's such a shame Jennifer Ball Spiritual Garage. I've been shopping today and had my aura photographed. Wow, I had my aura photographed one 
once, I think it was on my Facebook profile. Apparently I was very, very confused at the time. That's what they told me because I, I had a whole rainbow of colours around me. I wonder if it's because it's a late printing. It could be. Yeah, this is 1996 printing. Um, and yeah, Patrick got it and then he passed it on to me because he's had a, um, another one with the, the lovely wooden box. And Joyce has read auras and seen them since a child. I'm just hoping my pitch gets a little bit better. It's really strange because on the iPad it's beautiful, high definition, but I can see what you can see and it's, it's not brilliant really. Okay, so how are we all? Are you all having a great Saturday? Did any of you catch the interview with Katie um, that I did this afternoon? Um, as I said, she was she was lovely and we had a really nice chat. We talked about everything from um, favourite oracle decks and cards we identify with and cards that we perhaps don't identify with. We talked about using the tarot as a a tool to aid um, Kelly Bear. I missed the interview, only just got in. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, but you're here now. Welcome. I hope you've had a, a fab day. Um, and wild fantasy, yeah, great time with Katie. But White, it was too short though. <laughs> yeah, I was very mindful of, of this one because before we went on air, you know, I said I will try and keep this to an hour because Kate had been out for the evening, you know, and she'd just got back. It was 11 o'clock at night there and it was only two in the afternoon for me. So I didn't want to keep her up much past uh, midnight. So, so yeah, I, um, I decided that would stick to, to an hour. So it did feel short. It went by really, really quick and I could have asked her quite a lot more, um, but yeah, I was a bit, a bit mindful of that. And yeah, it was very late for her, very early for a lot of people in the States. Um, but yeah, it was nice. It was a nice interview. I really enjoyed it. And it's always nice. It was the same when I interviewed uh, Kelly Bear. Um, people that I've known before even my channel. Um, people that I've watched for a couple of years and loved what they've had to say. Suddenly, you know, having this dialogue with them is, is really special. And I feel very fortunate. What do you think about the new Oracle deck from Deviant Moon? Let's talk Mildred. Yes. Um, I'm really, really excited. I, I was wrong. My prediction was a tarot deck because when um, the little snippets of information was talking about um, Mildred's mum and how Mildred's mum was a tarot reader, I did think that they would dig up the grave and Mildred's remains wouldn't be there. Um, but I thought in its place would be a tarot deck and it would be the one that was passed down from her mum. So I thought it was perhaps going down that route that um, it wasn't anything else coming from Mildred as such, but Mildred was the link. Um, but an oracle deck, in my opinion, is the next best thing from the Deviant Moon. And... I didn't realise, but bear with, that of course I've already got two of the Oracle cards, and Jennifer you will have as well. So, um, because when you order from them you get all these extras, that's from the Deviant Moon, and it's this gorgeous paper, like your Menegello paper stock, which is just amazing. I have got um, card number six, which is Wrapped Witches. So that is going to be one of them that he wrote on the back, Wrapped Witches. That came from Patrick. And then this one, of course. Has my picture suddenly got clearer? This one is Beware the Spring Thaw. And that might not be what it's going to be called, and that's card number five. That might not be what it's going to be called in the Oracle, but that's what he wrote on the back. So... So yeah, so this is what the, the Oracle is, is going, to be, going to be like. And I'm, I'm so excited. And as I put in on YouTube yesterday in the Deviant Moon comments, thank you, Kelly, that's brilliant. We'll be able to show them in KRT then. Um, as I put in the comments yesterday on 
um, Patrick Valenza's Deviant Moon channel, um, it is the first time I've ordered a deck without having any idea of what they look like. I've never done that before, but such is my faith in Patrick and his artwork and everything is produced, I adore. I know that it, it will just be special. And I couldn't order it quick enough when I heard it was limited. The first edition, the first print run, this is where people get upset with Deviant Moon because they think it's going to be limited to that number only. It's not. It's the first print run. And he has stated very clearly there will be more later in the year, around October time. But that first print run is limited to 500 copies. Thinking about all the shovels that's been sent out and all the marketing, I just thought it's going to fly out. It's going to, get, and I I couldn't find it at first. I was like, where is it? And somebody said you have to go to the search and and search it and order it. So I ordered it without even seeing um, any of the cards. It wasn't until I was chatting to Kelly later that she said, actually, if you go and have a look, those two cards are shown. And I realised it was the two that I'd, I'd got. So. I loved his hand painted cards, they're my favourite, yeah, they're beautiful, they really are beautiful Tammy Pie. Um, and Ink and Flame has just got Mildred's um, Secret Pocket Oracle and Booster Pack, so I love it. I've got that here, which is just gorgeous. I've got to now, now that the dig is over, I've got to take my shovel out, edge it in black. In fact, if I take out my Sharpie, it will remind me. Edge it in black and then um, add it to, to the rest. I have got the paradoxical one as well, but I just love this little, little one in black. Just so cool. So yeah, I'm going to leave that out so that I, I don't forget to do that. Pop the pen over there. So how's everybody's weekend? Clear Simon. Thank you, Jeff. Um, if you do have any questions for me, do pop them um, in the comments below. I'm just going to... been saying let's see if you've been talking about me while I've been gone uh, an ice storm rolling oh I'm sorry I'm really sorry to read that alchemy's arrow um, much much love and positive energy to you and your family really sorry and yeah even though you know painful struggles and everything um, are over and suffering has ended it's still Still a wrench for everybody that's left behind, so you have my love and um, positive vibes and thoughts to you and your family at this time. Uh, sound of the ocean wave, quick, grab a deck. <laughs> What's my deck count? Okay, it's funny you should say that because I, I have an Excel spreadsheet and I updated it yesterday. Um, and part of the reasons why I always do unboxings is to remind myself I have to go back and see which ones I've had or go to my Amazon list and see which ones have been sent. Um, currently. Um, but I still have a couple on pre-order. Somebody, Tracy Tinnaman, Tracy Tinnaman, Temperance Tarot, posted in for Love of Cards yesterday that her Baba deck has been shipped. Mine hasn't been shipped. And I'm only across the pond from, from Ireland, only across the channel. Um, so that's still to come, and Wonderland is still to come from Barbara Moore, I think, 1st of May. And there's a couple of others, the tattoo one, I forgot what it's called now, not the eight coins one. I think it's a, um, it's a Pip deck tattoo. Kelly, if you're here still, you'll know what it's called. The Marseille Pip style tattoo tarot. <laughs> that's coming as well. Um, and what I do want to buy next month is the... Um, Everyday Enchantment Tarot because I'm just watching every unboxing I can find of that. I just love it. But what was that number? Are numbers really important? Ink and inspiration. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> That's it, yeah. Um, and Kelly's turned me on to that deck. I, it's, it's beautiful, so do check it out. 
Um, oh, okay. So while I've got a good clear picture, shall we have a look at the Minkayate Tarot? I have been wanting to shuffle the heck out of this and play with this and do some spreads. Oh my life, Bobby. Hello. How are you? I don't think you've ever been able to make a live chat yet. It's lovely to see you. I hope your journey home um, was was uneventful in terms of, you know, you, you, your passage back to New Zealand from the UK was, um, was pleasant. And, oh, it's just so lovely to, to have you here. She's jet lagged, <laughs> I bet you are, I bet you are. How many hours flight is that from the UK to New Zealand? And where do you stop over? I know when you go to Australia, you stop over in China, but um, yeah, where? But it's so lovely, lovely to have you here. It must be middle of the night, or what time will it be in New Zealand? Is it like, well, when I interviewed Annika, it was like 4 a.m. I think it's about half past five something like that half past five in the morning so not middle of the night but very early for Sunday morning but if you jet lag it, it takes a while oh it's 3 31 wow 3 31 a.m. you're either going to bed late or you've woke up really early but what whatever welcome welcome to Cup of Catherine cards it's lovely to to have you here we're just about to have a look at the Minkayate Tarot. So as you can probably see, I've got a bit of a love affair at the moment with Il Menigello decks. But, um, and never say never, I do feel at the moment that this is probably the last one I want to get for the time being. I keep looking at the one Annika showed, which is the Marseille deck, which is actually a glossy feel, which is so unusual for um, Il Manigello to do that because I don't have a, a write-up Marseille deck of that quality, really. Um, but for not not right now. So the Minkayate. Lots of discussion in the community at the moment about packaging. All I'll say about the packaging is it is still fantastic sturdy two-part box um, I don't mind the Il Manigello label um, printed all over it as Waldo is 91 is he I think I heard 90 or 91 he's not going to be carrying on in the same way he's been able to do for the last 30 years or so hand making those beautiful boxes his stepdaughter Christina um, is kind of being trained, taking on more responsibilities and this isn't, you know, a huge outfit. This is a tiny, tiny family business of two people and um, if we can still get decks of this quality coming in boxes like this, I'm, I'm happy. Um, it still has the seal. It doesn't have um, Oswaldo Menegaz's signature. It is the, the logo for the company, for Il Menigello. Um, but I just think they're fabulous. I, I love them. And this deck, in fact, all the decks here, with the exception of the Visconti Sforza, are 35 euros. So for the quality, I just think that's, that's amazing. So I, I love them presentation packaging everything the card there's always a card stuck on the front and from this deck it is the wheel or the wheel of fortune um, the thing is with the Minkiati deck as well it, they don't follow the same number of systems so you'll see that it's number nine there so um, as I mentioned this is a 97 card deck so it's Originally, originally from the 16th century, early 16th century, although this version that um, Il Menigello focus on is from 1850 or thereabouts, that's the estimate anyway. It has 40 major arcana plus the four, so 41 major arcana and the regular 56 cards. The 56 cards are your usual cups, 
coins, batons and swords. Um, there are some changes to the courts within the suits. So you have, um, I'm trying to think now, you still have your king and queen, but you have a, um, in fact, I made some notes um, and I can't, have I got them here? Bear with. Oh, my journal, okay. So, yes, Jack or Infantry Woman. So instead of the page, because two suits have a Jack and two suits have in, an Infantry Woman. And then um, the Knight is referred to as the Horse. Um, that's it, I remember that. It's referred to as the Horse. Um, However, looking at some of the uh, night cards, I wouldn't say there was all horse, but there's certainly half half man, half animal. Um, so that's that's how they've covered the courts. In terms of the major arcana, you it, it's very much seen as a an extension of the tarot, the Minkerte, because it's or an involvement of the tarot. That's how, certainly how it was seen at the time because the they still have a lot of the archetypes, but some of the religious element has been taken out. So there is no um, Pope or Popess or, or High Priestess, Hierophant. Um, you have like a Grander Duke and other, other cards, and they, they don't necessarily fit the same number in structure. They also have in their um, virtues, so there's some virtue cards. Then you have astrological uh, associations. So you have your star signs, uh, Libra, Virgo, etc. Um, and then at the end, it also brings in. It goes back to you know um, what we consider the end of our tarot, the world judgment, you know, and, and star moon and some before that. So you have that kind of inserted before those last few cards as well. Okay, so shall we shall we take a look? Let me just see if there's any uh, messages before. Darren. Uh, okay, so oh, it, that sounds like um, Juju B Hex is going through a tough time as well. Sorry, sorry to hear that. Um, in complaint, Osvaldo reminds me of my grandfather who worked for his craft until he was in his 90s. Yeah, I mean, such inspiration, aren't they? Oh dear, yeah, so there's been a family bereavement. So we've, we've had a couple of people today in, in, the, in the group that's going through some really tough times at the moment. So love and light to, to all of you, you guys that are here. And hopefully you'll be able to draw some strength from us um, collectively as well as we as we chat and support each other okay so two-part box as i mentioned very very sturdy i do love their packaging have i said that already with it being a 97 card deck um it is quite a thick deck. These are the backs which are just gorgeous. It's like a pebble pebble effect. A nice nice thick deck. They're not large cards at all as you can see from from my hands. Probably um, comparing it with a regular Rider Waite Smith as I always do you'll see that it's quite a sizable difference. So they're quite a small deck. I don't know Quite a few people appreciate um, small decks, actually, so that's not going to be a problem for, for a lot of people. You get a little booklet on the Minchiati Florentine, and half of it is in Italian, and then the other half, just a couple of pages, really, and the list is in um, English, so that's, that's helpful. 
There are 2,000 decks printed, and this is number 1255 of 2,000. So I love the way you get these little, little cards telling you. And then you always get the little disclaimer saying any imperfections are deliberate. Um, oh, not deliberate. Um, the, what he says is, this item is created by hand. Any imperfections or variations are due to its workmanship and are not considered as defects. Fair enough. But also, a lot of the decks, um, Oswald has put the imperfections deliberately into them. So, um, you know, wine spilled or any kind of aging and staining that would have been in the originals have been recreated onto the decks as well, which, which is really, really nice. Okay, so let's let's have a look then at our our cards. And if you have any questions about any of the cards, do put them in capitals, and I'll try and um, pick up on what people are saying. So, firstly, without number, we have our full card, and this is very different, isn't it? You know, here we see somebody still kind of carefree, but playing with children, just having that childlike innocence, just playing and barefoot in the grass. I really like that, it's a really nice card. And I, I, haven't, I haven't seen these, I've deliberately not, other than had a quick flick through the other day when I opened them, I've not had a look at this deck at all. I've waited, I've waited to share it with you guys. Okay, so um, in terms of the major arcana, remember that some of the cards have, have changed, particularly the number in, but these so far are, are starting off. So we do have our magician, and our magician here, um, you know, doing some some performing some magic with people people watching. Now this this tarot um, was designed as a game, but it was uh, at, at the time in the 16th century. It was called a trick game. Um, I can't really find out much about the reasons why, but um, it was kind of saying that, you know, rather than divination and stuff like that, it's, it's, a, it's a game of trickery. It's a game of, for fun. Um, it's also to believe to have been a teaching aid as well for um, youth, for the youth, in terms of learning about um, astrology, associated with two archetypes and things like that so but yeah so that's quite interesting oh there is a i oh know it's okay it's just jennifer reminding people thank you jennifer to put any questions in in caps okay then we have our second card is the grand duke so that's what the second card is because remember it's had the religious element taken out Bridge Simon. Oh, is that the size that you're you're referring to? Bridge bridge size. I thought they were a little bit wider, the bridge size ones. These are quite quite narrow. But yeah, probably in terms of height. So that's the Grand Duke. Then we have our our Emperor. They're so beautiful. I love the sketchiness of them. Oh, Tammy Pass says no, the card game. Okay. Bridge. Yeah. But they were, they were, what I was reading about it the other day, I was saying about it, it was called the game of tricks. A trick game. Did you find that the deck with the sharp corners wear out and fray sooner than rounder ones? Um, I think it probably depends on the cardstock. I mean, the cardstock, this isn't the best of Il Manigello's cardstock compared with something like the Soprafino, but it's still nice cardstock. I personally, well, I can't riffle shuffle, <laughs> but even if I could riffle shuffle, I probably wouldn't with an Il Manigello deck. I would prefer to shuffle hand over hand and... Uh, your regular shuffling. I think the trick refers to taking the trick in the game, like a bridge. Okay. 
So, and then we have that. Sorry, that was the the Empress there. No, uh, where's my four? Don't tell me I got a. Oh, okay, yeah. No, it's the Emperor and the Empress. Believe it or not. So. I'm doing this completely wrong. We have the Empress, the Emperor, the Grand Duke. Right, back on track. Our five is our lover's card. Yeah, we're looking at the Minchiate Florentine the Il Menegello uh, version here. And we're here we have our lover's card. I mean, arrow shot straight into the head, straight through that crown chakra. You're gonna know that, aren't you? You're gonna know when you've received that, that, uh, that message. The six is temperance. So temperance comes in at number six. Which is gorgeous. I love those, those kind of the three main colours, the blue, yellow and red of the deck. Seven is our strength card, referred to back then as force, which is very interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, you look at that and you think, well, how does that indicate strength? I mean, you have a sturdy pillar at the side of her. But uh, Tiger's Abyss, Zach says, I saw in a book on Instagram a minkeate with dark blue or black backgrounds. Okay, that's interesting. If there's another minkeate out there, I'll probably get it because I like to do the side-by-side -side comparisons with the Il Menegello decks, as you know. Um, then we have our Justice cards. Justice, which is gorgeous. Alas, Samson, the pillar, yeah. And the one that's on the front is the wheel, which is number nine. And I love that wheel card. How amazing. Look how the, how the coloration goes outside of the the lines with the print brilliant he's just he's just there reading his book even though he's having the wheel trample all over him Fab. okay so number 10 is the chariot So it's quite a bit of nudity in this deck. Not that I, I mind about nudity in the slightest, but I know some people do. But it's fantastic art. Beautiful, beautiful art. Okay, and then we have our Hermit card. And you know, if this was a brand new modern deck, people would be saying, wouldn't they? Ah, oh, it's fantastic that we have differently abled people represented in our decks. Um, and here we have that for the, uh, the Hermit. I love how there's an arrow going through the, the hourglass, that timer, as if to say, time is irrelevant. Time is not important. Forget it. Take your time. Study, learn new things. Don't be rushing about. Live in the moment. <laughs> Christina says it would take me forever to learn so many of the cards without titles. Yeah, but so many of them you, you are instantly recognisable. 
that's why I got a little bit mixed up at the beginning with the whole Duke and Emperor and Empress because they're so similar. Only that one doesn't have a beard <laughs> after the three. Okay, we all recognise this this character. I like the fact that the, the hanged person is is female. Art is so fantastic. I wish there was a modern day for this type of beautiful, vivid colours and art. Okay. And we have our death card. Very striking death card. What a powerful image. And you see cards like this and you realise where modern more modern day inspiration comes from now we've already had temperance haven't we so the death card goes straight to the devil card look at these serpents here i love it so that's our 14 they do the Roman numerals really weird as well, you know, like if it's 18, it'll be um, 19, sorry, it'll be X, V, 1, 1, 1, 1, rather than, you know, the 1 before the double X. Now, can you guess what this card is? <laughs> Any guesses? Apart from Zach, because he's got this deck, I think. I'm sure you've got this deck. Yes, <laughs> he's done it, he said it. That's the Tower card, which is really interesting, isn't it? That Devil card reminds me of the Devil card Oswaldo added to the Visconti Sforza. Looks like leaving the Garden of Eden, that banishment. It does look very Adam and Eve-ish, doesn't it? And I wonder if there's a book. Is there a book out there that you can get with this deck? Zach, do you know? Hi, Laurie. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I like it. I really, really like it. It does look like she is being banished by the, the hand on the head being kind of forced out of a... Maybe this is a tower, a her tower, and she's being banished and forced out of it. So into that uncertainty, naked, vulnerable... Um, having to start with nothing, you know, having your world rocked. Becky Beekler says, my Minky Arte only got a little fold out paper thingy. Okay, and then we move into our virtues. So we depart with the, the cards or the archetypes that we might be familiar with, and then we go into our virtue cards. So this one is hope. And we have prudence look at that isn't that a fantastic card reflection in the mirror holding the serpent really really gorgeous card i love it plus i have the beetles playing in my head now <laughs> ragged poet typical to blame it all on the woman who's blamed it on the woman Oh, okay. So Robert M. Place's new book explains that imagery. Which new book? <laughs> Faith. And then we have um, charity. That Adam and Eve imagery with the image of pulling down the female really turns me off this otherwise phenomenal deck. Yeah, but, you know, 
you, you think about the time as well, don't you? And the, the dominance that um, men had over women and that, yeah, she, she looks quite, I, I get where you're coming from, she looks quite vulnerable, but you know, why can't she be a strong, independent, independent woman who actually, departing from that situation, finds her own feet, grows strong? We see it in the strength card, so. Okay, and then I forgot to mention as well, we have the, we have the elements represented, so the four elements represented as well, which I think is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That's what I was getting at. On the other hand, we could say, well, if a woman calls the tower moment, then how has the power? Okay. So we have fire. Yes, thrifty mistake. <laughs> Sod you, I'm off. <laughs> yeah, maybe that hand is trying to stop her from going. <laughs> maybe he realises that his, his power will lessen without a strong woman by his side. <laughs> it's how we interpret it, exactly, but why? Back to finding it beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Hope from his arrow. So yeah, we have fire, which is a very dramatic card. Very dramatic. Not an easy card, is it? We have water. There's a there's an animal in the fire, Laurie. Yeah. Yeah, it's an animal. Maybe a wolf or a hound or something. Um then we have our, our earth card which i think is stunning just look at that how beautiful these palatial buildings above above ground and our beasts here drinking the water so it's being spilled out from the city in the background we do hope lewis we all interpret different Alchemy's Arrow, not to get off topic here, but I'm so thankful this is something you do each Saturday at this time. It's so supportive to wake up in such grief and know this space would be here. You're welcome. And, and that's one thing I really love about this community is that we, we have a community, A, in the first place, but B, you know, we, we, we are here for each other. And sometimes it's a little bit of escapism, talking about the tarot, but more than that, you know, we connect with like-minded individuals and that's really empowering when we when we realise that we're not alone, that we, there are people all over the globe who have similar thought processes and similar experiences and we, we get to share it. I never mind if I'm sat here talking about a deck and the conversation is something completely different. I'm, I love that because I'm seeing people connect and kind of just discuss and chat and, and talk through situations that they find themselves in. So. I'm glad to. Pincho, Paxton, I prefer this deck if it was remade with better quality cards and borders. Oh, the card quality is fantastic. Yeah, the borders, are perhaps, you know, if Low Scarabeo was to do it, but then you might get multiple languages and like we did with the Vachetta, but which I'm going to be trimming, but. I, I love the quality of Il Manigello deck, so I'm never going to say. Maybe this is the same creature that's in the fire, now in the air card. Um, maybe. But yeah, so then we have our ear, look at that, with the birds flying and the stars, the clouds. Just breathing in, breathing in that air. Then we go into the astrological associations. And interestingly, we start off with Libra. Now I don't mind, I am a Libran. <laughs> uh, but it's just interesting that it starts with 
Libra. Oh, thank you, Hope. We love you being here. So Libra, which is a beautiful card. I really like that. Then, ooh, then we have Virgo. Gorgeous. Scorpio. Wow. What a what an image. Say that this deck has been around since the 16th century. I think it's incredible. Not necessarily in this this version, but bye Jeff. See you soon. You're welcome. Talk soon. Uh, I have to look at some of these images at some time because I'm not much of an astrologer <laughs> or into astrology. It's not really my my bag. But when, especially when it's animals, I'm thinking now now what animal what animal is that? But this is Aries, isn't it? So we have Aries, brilliant card. I like that groin. I like that little mantra you've got going on there. <laughs> Capricorn. Now isn't that interesting? We'll see a lot of things like this when we get to the courts as well. Brilliant. That melding together, the two. Again here, the Sagittarius. We have our Cancer Crab. For card number 30. Pisces. I mean, just look at the shading and that colour. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, never mind, Zach. But thank you for looking for us. I really appreciate that. And if anybody else, either watching now or watching back in replay, um, knows of a book that explains the cards for their Minkiate, I think. L at Sacred Seed might have had a book at some time, at some point, or referenced a book. I seem to recall way back in my memory. Aquarius. Now, for some reason, the cards change here and go to red backgrounds, which again is very interesting. So of course here we have Leo, our lion. And we have Taurus, the bull. Look at the, look at the crazy numbering. Yeah, I miss Elle. She did pop back, didn't she? She did something on a grimoire or Book of Shadows um, a couple of months ago, and I was like, yeah, she's back, and then disappeared again. She'll be back, I'm sure. I'm sure she'll be back soon. And we have our Gemini twins. And then we then go back to what we consider the traditional tarot for our, um, our star card. The moon card. 
I don't know if I prefer them with the red backgrounds or without. I think I prefer. Oh, it's throwing them everywhere. I think I prefer them without. I don't know. It's just interesting that it switches to this. And then we have the sun, which is gorgeous. Beautiful card. Hope loves the red. Yeah, they do add something, don't they? And we have our world card. Beautiful. Furry sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, we have our judgment. So that's the 41 cards, 40 cards plus the four of the major arcana. Um, I'll quickly show the the minors, but you you know what? Uh, once you've kind of seen one, <laughs> so that's our ace of swords. I love these because they do have uh, an animal at the bottom of the cards, which are, are really, really lovely. We have a unicorn there. This little bear sitting on a stool. Love it. <laughs> that sounds so loud because I've got my windows open because it's a it's a beautiful day today. It's a little uh, I don't know if it's a porcupine or a hedgehog, but Love that little guy there, a little monkey at the top. And then you have one like here, the nine, that doesn't have, have anything in the ten. But you have this, this is what I was on about, about the original staining that is recreated, which Osvaldo does with his decks. Okay, so then we have our courts. So in this deck we have the Jack, what's referred to as the Horse, our Queen of Swords, with the Imperfections, which is just lovely. Alchemist Arrow says, Hermit's Cave, this is going on my wish list. Thank you. I must go be with my grief now as I cannot seem to focus on this anymore. I totally understand, Alchemist Arrow. Much love to you. And uh, we'll, we'll speak soon. Message me if you like, if you, uh, if you need to. Okay. And then we have our cups. Beautiful cups. And for the old decks... I really love the cups and the pentacle suits. I think they're absolutely stunning in these old uh, Marseille or Pip style decks. I think they're really, really beautiful. What is my most loved deck? <laughs> I'll finish these, then I'll, I'll answer that questions. And any other questions you want to put in before I sign off, then I'm happy to, to answer them. So do drop them in and I'll, I'll answer them before I go. <laughs> People guessing now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
So for this for this suit, the suit of corpse, we don't have a jack. We have what's called the infantry woman. And that isn't a horse. Well, it's the, the horse card with the corpse, but it's clawed at the tone. Our queen of cups and our king of cups. And then, wow, the pentacles or the, the coins. This ace has this stamp on it. Well, there's a stamp there, quite faint, and a stamp there too is interesting looks like a 50 cent hmm. oh so far coins a little bit disappointing I like to see quite an elaborate coin like perhaps in the vachetta oh but now we've got an elephant. Although he looks like he's about to injure that elephant. But I hope he's not. Because the elephant could soon overpower him. <laughs> People are all guessing my favourite decks. Yeah, I'm not enamoured with the coins, to be honest. A little bit disappointing, but never mind. Everything else about the deck I love. So, Infantry Woman. The Horse card. Queen. And the King. And then our final suit is the Batons, which are well, the ace in particular is, is beautiful. I love that. Our two. Lovely. These don't have animals or any creatures on them, they're just purely the baton and the very um, Marseille style, but the swords aren't, you know, we've got those traditional Marseille bended shapes, curved shapes. And then we do have um, a jack. So two infantry women, two jacks. The horse. Our queen and our king. There we have it. Thank you for sticking with me on that. I mean, 97 cards is, is a lot to, to get through and that's why I've kind of uh, rushed through it a bit, but I love this, I really do. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little deck. Like I say, it's quite, quite small, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to working with it, certainly. So, where to put it though? I don't want to shake up my, uh, perhaps in the middle. Mm, it's hidden a bit, I'll think about that. I'll perhaps elevate it a little bit. <laughs> um, right, let's see if there's any questions then before um, I head out. I don't want to be on much more than, I was gonna say an hour, but we're up to 59 and a half minutes. So. Oh, that's nice, even cold. Okay, let's see. Those are super cool, Simon. The mermaid man with the claws really got me, says Laurie. <laughs> they are cool. I'm, I'm really pleased to have them. And uh, you're welcome, Hope. Um, and they're so reasonably priced. I think, is it Collect collect Tarot in the States? Sell little make yellow decks. We have Tarot BG, which is Bulgaria. And they only charge less than £10 shipping. And if you buy three decks, you get free shipping. Um, 
and they're only 35 euros which is around 30 pounds so the price of a, a new mass market deck really what is my most loved deck oh for what situation <laughs> If I'm just reaching for a deck, or if somebody says to me, can I have a reading, whether that's a friend or a family member, because I don't read professionally, the deck I reach for every single time, I've just, um, actually, I won't use that one, I'll use the one in my box. <sighs> you knew it my Rider Waite Smith and my favourite one currently very close contender with the Pamela Coleman Smith tarot I love the colours on that but my, the borderless Rider Waite Smith for me is my go to deck it is the one that I just grab for and the one that I um, read with that said I kind of have three on a par. I have this, I have the Deviant Moon, because I adore the Deviant Moon. I, I love it to bits, um, which I have here, always next to me, with my wonderful bag that Bobby uh, made for me, which isn't that just fantastic. So thick and quilted and Oh, Bobby, I don't know if you saw, by the way, but I re-edged it, because I'd edged it in black at first, and then I went over it in, in uh, old gold. Um, and I'm really, it's got a bit of a distressed look, but that's the, the point to it, really, is that it's not perfect. It has some little bits of black showing through, so it's kind of like an ancient gold. But I thought it really set um, the backs off. So I love the Deviant Moon. Deviant Moon is a favourite of mine as well. Oh, my favourite card in the Deviant Moon is the Death card. You'll see it behind me on the wall there. Can you see? Next to Soul card and above my Hermit's Cave painting. Um, what can I say about the Deviant Moon that I haven't already said a, a million times already? Um, and then my third deck, really, and I think it's still in the bedroom. I mentioned it earlier. I, I was going to say the Triomphe della Luna because I really, really love the Triomphe della Luna too. Um, but I think if if I'm honest, it would probably be my Japarizze Tarot, which is which is in the other room currently. Um, because I just I just love the Japarizze tarot. It's just beautiful. Um, so yeah, what's what's your guys' favourite deck? Let's have some some type talk. Let's let me read some out. Favourite decks because it's okay asking me, but let's turn the tables. <laughs> what's yours? Uh, Gruen says she loves layering edges. Um, thank you. Beautiful edging, thank you. Tildwick, Tildwick, I should say, is Tammy Pies. Tara Vampires for Pixie Dust, Mary L for Tigers Abyss. I love Mary L as well. I absolutely love Mary L. I have two versions of that, a trimmed version and a non-trimmed version. I do want to get the gold edged one as well, but I just didn't order it yet in case they still got back stock of the old one. Tower of the Sweet Twilight, I'm taking that to see when I see Kelly and having that trim. So I'm having a magical forest makeover for Sweet Twilight because I love it, but I can't I can't get on with the borders and multiple language. The Neo Classico is Tarot Closets. Good choice. I love the Neo Classico. Um Borderless Rider Waite Smith for Christina. Ragged Poet's not telling us. I know what yours is, Ragged Poet, I'm sure. 
Um, but white is Arthurian tarot. Just see if there's any other questions. Which deck annoys you most in terms of design? Annoys me most. <laughs> I don't like calling decks, but there is one deck that annoys me most. And it's the only deck on my trade list now. But nobody wants it. <laughs> oh, I can't get it. Hold on. Bear with. Pat them in too tight. <laughs> the English magic. I just don't like this deck. I've tried to, but in terms of designs, look at that from back. Look at that for odd shaped borders. Look at that for cardstock. There's no consistency. The sun, no border. I just, if you could do some with borders and not, I know it's minors and uh, majors, etc. I mean, some of the images are are okay but yeah so you asked the question <laughs> that is my most annoying deck and one that's up, up for trade let's see if there's any other questions um please film a video overhead of these cards in a spread i'd love to see them in place the minkayate I could do that. There is a spread I'm wanting to do, but it won't have all the cards. It'll only use six, which is around the ego. I did a workshop this week about the ego and the types of the ego. And once you find out what your ego type is, then you work you work on, on that. And as a Buddhist, overcoming the ego is quite important. So I thought about filming a spread around there. So I could use those cards, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily see them all. Wild Unknown, are we still talking about favourite decks? I just bought the Tower of the Circus Magi and got a custom back put on it. Oh, isn't that annoying? I got mine from Patrick, my Circus Magi. Um, and beautiful, beautiful deck, beautiful card stock and really good quality. But yeah, I got customs this week on um, my new next world tarot i had to pay customs on that so annoying deviant moon and hesikos what's the topic bunny kisses i'm being asked what my favorite deck was and so i've, I've turned the tables and asked people to tell me what their favorite deck is uh druid craft yeah i love druid craft druid craft is one of the first decks I got and because I at the time was buying lots of decks overlooked it but really come back to it recently I do prefer it to Wildwood I like Wildwood but Druid, Druid Craft just edges it, edges it for me and talking of edging that's also one that I'm going to be edging and backing as well uh, trimming edging and backing I should say really want the vampire deck which vampire deck are you talking about Robert M Place's um, the Vampire Tarot or Tarot Vampires, um, which I have. Where is it now? I can't see where I've put it. I've changed all my decks around, as you can probably see. Um, and I can't find now. I used to be able to look straight away and say, oh, there it is, and put my hand on it. And I can't, I can't at the moment. It could even be down at the bottom. I've got a low down at the bottom as well. But anyway. Which, which vampire deck? Which is tarot is nice, but the card stock is terrible. Which is tarot is the one I'm, I'm working on at the moment, working with throughout this month. And it's, it's really hard because I love it and I'm getting a lot from it. But having a few decks that have taken a while to come have arrived and they're vying for my attention I'm like no I'm gonna leave you behind a little bit while I focus on the witch's tarot 
Hi Modern Unicorn and fantastic first video. If people haven't been on yet, do check out A Modern Unicorn. It's our very own Gracie Bolland who has started her own channel and did her first video last night that I watched this morning and it's brilliant. So it's talking about her favourite things and a bit about herself. So do check it out. Bobby says, my most annoying deck is a beautiful but little known oracle deck, but the creator charged me a fortune in postage, like 40 bucks more than the actual, and was not at all sorry about it. So that's why the decks become annoying. Yeah, it kind of gets tarnished a little bit when, when creators do things like that. Um, I cannot just look at the bloody thing, but I love the images, except she, the creator, has a picture all over the backs. Wow, talking of ego, <laughs> how's he putting your image on the back of every card? Wow, that would annoy me. Um, yes, Modern Unicorn, hands down the stretch tarot, I love the stretch tarot. I saw it first on you and your lovely mum doing a walkthrough of it and I got it and I ordered it and did a walkthrough and the creator thanked me for that walkthrough because he said he had a massive spike in sales and all his existing stock went so um and he's doing another one isn't he i believe gruen says no duck soup decks for me yuck uh any other comments or questions for the longest time my favorite was the aquarium tarot but it switched to the tower of prague this year uh, somebody asked a question earlier about the Victorian Romantic, but I forgot what the question was now, but I thought well, I'll come back to that. So if you're still here, I forgot what the question was, but I haven't received mine yet, but I heard that um, the dispatching, a soaring full of her cards, uh, Tracy at Temperance Tarot had posted that hers, she'd had a dispatch notification. Uh, Duck Soup does charge a lot, yeah, I've heard that. And I got my Zirkus Magina trade to Tammy Pie. A modern unicorn, you're a doll. Thank you, so are you. <laughs> um, Zach says, duck suit decks are printed from make playing cards and they're like $60. Make playing cards, really? Because my Zirkus Magina is pretty good card stock and I didn't think make playing cards was. Super fuzzy images. Oh, Jennifer's had to go. Bye, Jennifer. Mara bought the stretch tarot because of my video. I love it. Does it show how, how we all enable each other? MSK, did you get the first or second edition? And he, yes, he's working slowly on a Lenormand deck. I got the first edition. I got the last one of the last of the first editions. And then because he, um, because I did the walkthrough, he then sold out of all his existing one and did a second print run. Um, okay. Uh, Rackham Oracle, yeah. I got all confused. I was gonna order the Rackham Oracle out some Christmas money. And then it was like, choose your size, choose your backing. And because I was using a device because I was away for Christmas, I got really confused how, what I was doing and I just gave up. And then I saw the price and I thought, oh, I'll really be stung at customs for this. Stretch Tarot's top of Hope Lewis's wish list. I am catching up with comments, honestly. Oh my God, has the VR been shipped? Yes, apparently, but I've not had ship. well, to some, um, not everybody. Uh, waiting for Numinous. I've seen the Numinous. Tom Benjamin did a, a, a great walkthrough, didn't he, of the Numinous Tarot. I like the look of it. But so far, I'm just lusting over the Enchanted, Everyday Enchantment. I get like that. I become obsessed and keep watching it. I can't wait for payday to, to get it. Who is doing the Lenormand deck? The Stretch Tarot. Uh, bringing out Stretch Lenormand. And Tammy Pie is waiting for four decks. Uh, 
I'm saving for the next world deck, says um, Calm Men. It's out of stock every place I check. I know I was really lucky, I think. Annika just kind of sent, tagged me in a link to a shop that had a few le left. Um, but check out Next Wild, Next Wild shop. They have one in New York and they have one in Los Angeles. And I got mine from the Los Angeles one. It wasn't that expensive really, it just was when you add on the shipping and the um, customs that I had to pay. Ragged Poet says, Simon, if you get the Rackham, get the big one. I would do. I, I would For oracles, I do like big oracles. Um, my daughter's bought me mine for Christmas a couple of years ago and the big one wasn't out then, but I think it would be totally better. Yeah, they're very detailed images, aren't they? So I think it would work better in a, in a larger uh, card. Tiger's Abyss says, Hermit's Cave, just get the Low Scarabeo fairy tale oracle coming soon. Same Rackham artwork. I need to make a note of that, Zach. So, Low Scarabeo, uh, what's it called? Fairy Tale Oracle. I will do. Thank you. Thank you for the tip. Um, I followed Poppy Park Palin deck for ages. I have an older deck, but then decided against it. Lovely Earthling, though. Yeah, but it's 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 a UK deck as well, Bobby. It's you know when you saw that when I was first looking at it, I was thinking, well, this is very similar to Next World. I get it's a little bit softer, it's toned down a little bit in terms of its political stance. Um, you know, and you've got the otherworldly beings like little fairies appearing and, and things like that sprites and things but uh, when I saw like a demonstration and there was all the police officers the British bobbies I thought do you know what yeah this will be nice to have as well as the next world so I'm gonna get it um, okay so you two won't let me paste a link in why not my tarot story oh that's a shame yeah i i couldn't find you either under my modern unicorn because there was lots of different posts around that so i typed in your channel at uh, your video title why not question mark my tarot story plus current favorites and it brought you up so and then i was able to find you and subscribe to you and turn on that all important bell um yeah i get quite a few messages by the way guys from people saying I didn't get a notification of you live, sorry I've missed this and I wasn't informed. You do have to uh, click the bell. If you're subscribed to my channel, next to subscribe there's the little bell. You just have to click that and then you will get notifications when I come on and do live. Simon, have you used the Waterhouse Oracle? I haven't. It turns into a tarot with the tools it comes with. Wow, no. You're not good for me, you lot. But I'll check it out. Doesn't mean I'm going to buy it, but I will check it out. Um, oh, Holy, Holy Hen has found... I think I've been calling you Holly Hen. Sorry, it's Holy Hen has found uh, a modern unicorn. Simon, do you have any bloodstone? What are your thoughts on it? Um, I do, in my big bowl. Um thoughts on it <sighs> I haven't really used it a lot if I'm honest it's just a, uh, it's just one that I, I have in my collection it's not one that I have out around me that I use daily or anything like that so I haven't really got a lot of thoughts on it other than when I've used it for chakra work um, but uh, I love I love stones for all different all different types and things Oh, of course, Zach. Yes, good point. If you click on the icon, go to channel, it will take you to the channel. Of course. Uh, Laurie says, if you want to visit a person's channel, you should be able to click on the three dots next to their entry in the chat screen here. That's another way. Brilliant tips. Um, Hermit's Cave, are you excited for Mildred Page's Oracle of Black Enchantment? Yeah, you must have just joined us, or since we mentioned it earlier, I'm so excited. 
as I said then, it's the only deck I have ordered that I didn't have any idea of what the um, cards were like. And then learned, of course, I haven't put it back, that out of these gorgeous cards that you get when you buy things, that that is card number five from the Oracle. I'm going to pop that back on its stand there. And the Rat Witches is card number six. I love this from the Deviant Moon. Have you seen this, Bobby? The colours in this, it was gorgeous. And it's on the lovely kind of art card like you get with all many Gallo decks. And Patrick signs them, but you may even have it. The richness of the paintwork is just stunning. If he was to do a whole deck of these, create this. He probably can't, as we've discussed before, because of US Games copyright, because, you know, they supply his decks, don't they? Um, but wouldn't it be amazing? Yes, I think it might just be on laptops, actually, uh, Laurie, the three dots. And Bobby has it, brilliant. I thought you would. Uh, Modern Unicorn says, that's such a lovely print. Does he do art prints in his shop? I'd love to have... I'm not sure if he can like that, but um, I bought the Witches edition of the Deviant Moon. So I have a couple of the same decks, the Deviant Moon ones. Um, and when you buy, like, particularly from like the Etsy shop and things like that, like the Witches edition, he puts in, he wraps them in brown paper. Excuse me. I mean, we know that we get things like that anyway, with like the trip, this came with the English uh, Trumpy Della Luna. But the Witches edition is wrapped in brown paper and he just, he gets his Sharpie out and he just doodles a, a fantastic image for you. I need to get this framed. Um, and he wraps the decks in that and then he puts in his art cards as little extras, um, which you can get from um, his Etsy shop or, uh, in fact, the Witches edition of the Deviant Moon is only available from the Etsy shop. It's not available from the website. And there's another one as well, uh, another edition. And I can't remember what it is. Bobby might know and help us out. Um, Bobby says, I got it when he released it a year or so back. That's my favorite card in the deck. I have the big, yeah, such a big, brilliant. And uh, Laurie says the Seven of Pentacles is her favorite card in the Deviant Moon, the Unwitch. Laurie and Gracie, are you in different parts of your house? Um, messaging from different devices. That would be so funny. Or well, Gracie, are you away at uni? Um, and if so, what well, a great way to connect and meet up. <laughs> That's insane. I adore it. Yeah, I do too. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't look at me showing my tummy off i'm just watching it back how, how horrific is that sorry guys um <laughs> as i'm reading the comments because there's that delay of course um the other edition is the mad woman yes the borderless deck yeah i've got loads of loads of this card i mean the, i've got the mad woman that i got in the deck as well so you get the mad woman there and then the the paradoxical version from the reverse, which I love. Anyway, Bobby, what do you think to the dig? Because I know you were kind of worried about not being back in your travel in time, coming from the UK to New Zealand. What did you think to the dig? What do you think to the Oracle? What are your thoughts? And Gracie says, Hermes Cave, same house, different areas. I'm outside on the back porch with sparkling water and my knitting. And where are you, Laura? Yes, I'm in my bedroom and Gracie is somewhere else. Somewhere else. <laughs> so funny. I love it. We just love you the way you are, Simon. Good job, isn't it? <laughs> Bearing all. I can't go back and edit that out either. You know, if I, was, if I wasn't live, I'd just go in and snip, snip that out. <laughs> oh, my life. I've been on 85 minutes. I was... 
I need to uh, come off and let people do things. It's okay, it's Saturday, don't apologise, it's not, nothing wrong with you. Yeah. Uh, Amethyst Soul, this is my first time watching this live. So it's the first time, because I've got a phone in hand, that I've been able just to sit and respond to you. Now I've finished going through the deck and it's really lovely actually, I've never been able to do this before. Just sit and just respond and have a chat with you. I need to do more of this. I love the video of the dig, says Bobby. Love the oracle and the roses too. But we still have Mildred's mother in the picture. It ain't over yet, Simon. Yeah, not a hint, wasn't they? We think, you know, that they, they said, and I can't remember the exact words, but we think there'll be more to be revealed through the oracle. And I, yeah, why mention the mother and her tarot exactly? That's what I was saying right at the beginning. Whilst I hoped there would be a tarot in the grave, this is the next best thing, but who knows what's coming. But we also have the Deviant Moon Oracle out next year too. Party party, we are fine here. Best sense Saturdays is Simon and all of you. Yeah, I love my Saturdays. Um, we all forgot about Mildred's mum. Well, not forgot, but once we saw it was an oracle, it was like, mm, maybe not then. And Mara was almost crying when the door went to the grave. Yeah, but Claire reunited after 86 years, was it? Mildred's mother does have a tarot deck. Yes, Laurie, she does. It's been mentioned. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> oh dear, I could just sit and chat to you all forever, but I do, I do need to go and do things. It's 20 to six in the evening. Um, I've got some calls to make and I've got friends coming over later. So I do kind of have to go soon. Um, but it's been fun and I've loved it. Zach, Zach says, what should be a Dorian Virtue deck that Mildred's mother used? Oh, no. That would probably be the only Deviant Moon deck I wouldn't purchase. Not, not that I've got anything against the, our Doreen. I do have one of her decks, the Ascended Masters, but the only one. But yeah, 86 years ago, I don't think even Doreen was around then, was she? Oh, stop it, stop it. Um, yes, we have to go. You're right, but right. So, thank you guys. I've, I've loved the chat today. I feel like I've been on all day. What with Katie Flowers' interview from two till three, and then me coming back on from four till nearly quarter to six. It has been absolutely lovely. I would normally pull a card, but I pulled the card for the week ahead for us in the... Um, chat with Katie and just went into autopilot and did it tomorrow morning of course there'll be the week ahead spread on my Instagram so do check that out um, looking at our opportunities and our challenges and, and things like that so um, have a fantastic rest of your Saturday wherever you are in the world whether you're like Bobby in the wee early hours of a New Zealand morning or a lot of you in the States or those of us that are here in the, the UK have a fantastic time. I might see some of you later in Kelly's live chat. Um, wow, a day for live chat. And until next time, guys, go in peace, namaste, and blessed be. Take care. I never know how to end it on my, um, on my iPad. <laughs> so bear with. Take care, guys. Bye.